bandage over his injured right hand yesterday. He still looked like his old self, though, throwing two fourth quarter touchdown passes to Danny Amendola. After the game, Brady said the injury was something he just had to deal with. But Bill Belichick had a much, much more interesting comment. Let's take a listen. Can you just speak to the, the resourcefulness of Tom dealing with something like that midweek and then coming out and playing, playing a huge game like that? I mean, look, Tom did a great job, and he's a tough guy. We all know that, all right? But yeah. I'm talking about open-heart surgery here. Mm. Shannon, what did you mm. make of Belichick's comments? I made a Coach Belichick comment. He's a guy that's instilled that we do not make excuses. No matter what transpired, no matter who's in the lineup, no matter who's out of the lineup, we do not make excuses for why we win or lose. The reason why every player speaks such so glowingly and he prays on Coach Belichick that, that he doesn't play favorites. Coach Belichick was tired of hearing the narrative that Tom Brady is a team. He stresses that. It's a team. It's a team. And everybody kept trying to make the game about Tom playing with his injury. And Coach Belichick had had enough. He said, we're not talking about open heart surgery here. And this is why his players, they love him because – We've seen, and I've seen it firsthand, that they make excuses for the quarterback or they make excuses for certain star and great players when everybody can see it was his fault. But that's not what Coach Belichick does. And Coach Belichick says this was a team win. Tom is a tough guy, but he didn't have open heart surgery on Wednesday and play the game on Sunday. So Coach Belichick just basically laid down the gauntlet and says enough of this, okay? The guy played, he cut his thing, cut his hand, and he went out there. But the New England Patriots won, not just Tom Brady. And I think that wasn't an accident that he said that. He could have said a lot of other things, mm, mm. but that wasn't an accident it that he said that. It definitely was not an accident. <laughs> it was a pointed shot at his quarterback with whom he is forced to share way too much credit in Bill Belichick's opinion. That sounded like a Shannon Sharp comment on Undisputed. <laughs> that was Bill Belichick saying, well, what are we doing? We're overblowing this little cut on his thumb of his throwing hand. Tom wasn't no with deal. child like Serena. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's go back to what Tom Brady said and what was reported, that when this accident happened in practice on Wednesday, Tom Brady was screaming in agony, not because of the pain, because of what Tom Brady said after the game yesterday, of all the plays, my season can't end on a handoff in practice. You don't think that shook up the quarterback at midweek, Wednesday, Thursday, practice is crucial? And he has some rare, inexplicable accident with Rex Burkhead, at least that was the report. Yeah. And his thumb got bent back so far that it split. Right. It's like maybe you'd catch a pass, the, web. the webbing would yes. split. Yes. Something in that webbing where it split all the way across, except right. it was on the underneath side. Right. And by the way, just for the record, on the blown-up pictures I saw yesterday of Brady's hand before the game, the thumb was about twice its size because yeah. it's swollen. It's right. got stitches of in course, it. Yeah. It's no big deal. And I don't think it bothered him one iota yesterday. But it troubled him during the week because he was not sure. A, first he thought maybe something else is wrong. Did it get pulled back to where it's dislocated? Do I have a fracture? Is it, something, is it just sprained? Because any of the above could have eliminated him from playing oh, yeah. the game. Well, if he had a, if he had a, 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 a severe sprain, Skip, that's, and that's the problem because the grip comes into yeah. play now. Okay. So he said, Wednesday, Wednesday night, This I'm quoting Tom Brady, Wednesday, Wednesday night, Thursday, I was not sure. Well, that's a pretty big deal. It's your throwing hand before the AFC right. Championship game against the Jacksonville or Saxonville defense. That's a big deal. So, and Danny Amendola, who's a close friend of Brady, says he was stressed out a little bit over this because he couldn't fathom why it had happened to him now. Right. And it's like, remember all the bad luck he's had against Tom Coughlin teams in the, the previous Super Bowls, and I'm sure Tom, being a student of history, sat back on Wednesday night and said, he's getting me again. It's happening again. It's like the, the luckiest pass in the history of the Super Bowl. Eli Manning, you know, trumped Brady, so to speak, in the, you know, after Brady hit Randy Moss for a right. touchdown. It looked like it won the game with 242 left, and Eli escaped three potential sacks and then closes his eyes and throws it downfield, and, and Brady got Bradyed by Eli. Skip, I don't know if you heard this, but Mr. Kraft said Tom Brady had FaceTimed him and told him about yep. the injury. 
I bet you know. I bet I know who did not call yep. Mr. Kraft and tell him what happened at practice. Oh, that's a good point. You know what? I'm sure that got back. I'm sure because uh, it was made public, uh, so it got back to the coach. And the coach and the quarterback, as I've told you before, several friends of Tom's have told me he's a little like bemused over it. Like, what? Why is this? They're not close at all. Yeah. They don't socialize, and I get it on Belichick's part because he doesn't want to get close to any player because at some point he thinks he's going to have to tell Tom to go home, right? And, and at some point yeah. he's going to have to tell all of them yeah. to go, go home. home. Yeah. And here's the thing, Skip, again, remember we got, a, we got a passageway. Now, it goes Coach Belichick to Mr. Kraft, yeah. Tom Brady. Tom Brady, Coach Belichick, Mr. Kraft. I, I, I'm, I ain't telling you. I'm going to go ahead and talk to you. I'm going to FaceTime. Hey, Dad. I mean, uh, Mr. Crab. Uh, hey, Mr. Crab. You know, you know so he, pro he probably calls him Dad jokingly when they're just having conversations. Maybe. Maybe. And guess that what Mr. Crab did after the FaceTime? He was down in, I think, Fort Look, Lauderdale. He and him. he immediately jumped on his private plane, and he flew back to Foxborough and, just to make sure it was going to be okay and, on and, Wednesday. And, and guess what? Coach Belichick said, hold on, wait a minute. You mean to tell me you go behind me and go tell Correct. and go tell the owner? Yeah. Whoa. Right. So this is just me. Most coaches in that situation would, would laud their quarterback, would, would say, well, you know, he obviously had a pretty serious laceration. Right. It required whatever it was, 10 stitches. Yes. And he gutsed it up and he played and he played at an extraordinary level. You, you would just give him some props for the game. You would, it, it could be platitudes, but it's what you should say publicly. Yeah. But Bill Belichick said, Come on, it's not open heart surgery. Yeah. Really? That's a shot at the quarterback. Make no mistake about it. But Skip, his players, they love Coach Belichick because the thing that, that makes players, I think, sometimes resentful of other players is that you're willing to call me out for my mistakes in front of everybody. But when he makes glaring mistakes, you're talking about we got to do a better job, old line. We got to make better plays, guys. We got to get separation. We got to get open. Yep. So you make every excuse in the book why you're not going to point the finger at him and you're going to place the blame when everybody else is sitting there like, well, dude, don't, I mean, he's yeah. got to make that throw. Right. Coach Belichick doesn't do that. As you said, what was it, uh, in the uh, divisional round last year when they played the Texans. And it was in the ESPN article. Right, it was in the article with Seth Wickersham. Yeah. We're going to talk about that a little later. Yep. He also is like, well, hold on, this will get us beat. What the hell do you think you're doing? He, he just ripped him in the film, right. you know, because Tom didn't have a very good game against the Texans in the first right. playoff. I mean, you might, you might, score, you know, you're like, ooh, that's Tom. Like, yeah, give it to him, though, because yeah. you get me. If that was me, you'd be getting to me like, ooh, ooh, Tom, I'm yeah. sorry. Ooh, that feels so and, good. And what, what else was Tom miffed <laughs> about through the year? Not once was he named Patriot of the Week. Especially this, this year. Yeah, but he's only won five Super Bowls, and you think, come on, that'd be beneath him. But you got pride. Yeah. You want to Of be course you win. Right? And, so, and there have been times, Skip, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going I'm to get this drug. I'm going to get this old player of the week. Give me yep. another crystal ball. Because in Denver, they gave crystal ball, and you had your name on the thing. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get the crystal ball. Yeah, through football season, you've been named Fox Performer of the Week, what, like seven Oh, like 15 times. times. Like 15 because times. They, they you know? want you to believe that you're, you're better hey, they than say you I, are. They say right? I'm FS1 Player of the Week, yeah. uh, FS1 Player of the Month, yeah. for like three straight months, dog. You just be giving it the skill. Because they want you to believe that you're better. I will, I will, I will yeah. let you get one skill. So, hey, Healy, I, I you and Witt, y'all going to give it to him because I, I don't want him to get upset and then, you know, boot me and George to, the, you know, try to get somebody else. So y'all let it win. I'm going to yeah. let you win. Okay. You thank right, Skip. Everything you said was right today. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> thank you. So bottom line, Tom Brady's final analysis was it would sound arrogant for me to say, oh, yeah, it bothered me because I had a pretty good game. Well, he didn't say it bothered him. Did it bother him? It didn't look like it did. If it did, it didn't affect Well, guess right? what he did, Joy? You said what he did there, Joy? It would be arrogant of me to say that it bothered me and I had a good game. So I'm not going to say it. You said it. You should have kept your mouth shut. You could say that. You know that. what he is, Skip Bader. Y'all yeah. see Skip Bader. I know what you see. You always do that, Skip. You know, he could have said if he would have been arrogant of him. It would be arrogant of me like Tiger Woods said I had my C game and won the tournament. Mm -hmm. Okay, then don't say anything. I'm happy that I won the tournament. He brought that up. I do, Skip Bader. Well, I do think his world got turned upside down for about two full days, Wednesday, Thursday. Well, when you don't. Hey. Is, is he not trying to build a monument in Foxborough? Like, is he, oh. he's, he's trying to make himself so great no one will ever touch his legacy, right? Skip. Skip. Is, did he just, we just talked about, he, he lives for this. Skip, there's, there's certain things, there's certain players. There's no, play, there's no quarterback, there's no player coming that's going to be able to touch what certain guys do. It, that's just the way it works. I don't care what guy can come to Chicago and play for the Bulls 
or play for any Chicago team can top what Michael Jordan has done. Okay, I get it. But but what if, let's do Shannon Sharp, Hall of Famer. Yeah. What if before your big playoff game at the Raiders against John Gruden's team yeah. in the AFC Championship game, what in practice you'd had some freak injury where you got your hand cut and you just, you were afraid you could I did. I was feeling I was up under the weather all week, Joe. I didn't know how I was going to, I didn't know how I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. They said, well, Shannon, what, what are you walking? I said, I don't know. I don't know. Just call uh, 22 Seattle. Mm -hmm. Just call it. Because I know they're going to play zero coverage. They're going to third and 18. We yep. backed up. They're going to blitz. They're going to miss a tackle. I'm going to go hit my head. And you'll, go. Just, you'll just I catch do that. one hand because you don't need both hands, right? <laughs> no, Skip, for me, I didn't – look, I had ankle problems a lot. And I just – I would get mad at, you know, why we got to keep putting my ankles that I got ankle problems? Because that meant people would tackle me and just fall on the back of my legs, and then here I am limping for the rest of the game. Stop telling them. Tell them I got a hurt finger. Mm. Lie. <laughs> like y'all ain't never lied before. Lie. It's okay. Joy, remember, it's okay to lie if it will spare someone great harm or despair. Mm. That, 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 you could have saved me great harm for them hurting my ankles. Joy. That goes against like 90% of your other quotes. No, no. Just sometimes. You're not don't. mincing words at all in New England. <laughs> Robert Kraft had some very interesting comments about Brady and Belichick. We'll discuss that next. Mm.